so I just went I just went to Dewat. Uh, I'm here in Polanco and it's an Indian restaurant so I ordered mango lassi. A lassi is a popular traditional dahi, which is yogurt-based drink that originated in the Punjab region of India. Lassi is a blend of yogurt, water, spices, and sometimes fruit. In this case, mango. Mm, dude, it's so good. I've been walking all day. I almost got killed today. If anybody knows about Mexico City, I was lost in the Pino Suarez metro area between Pino Suarez and Zocalo. I was walking around thinking I was going to go look for Mercado La Merced. Dude. On my way there, there was a fight, like a huge brawl of people just like fighting. And I recorded it. Here it is. Dude, <laughs> that's intense. Sounds like a domestic dispute. I have no idea. So I decided to take the metro to, to Polanco and dude, it feels so much nicer being down here. Like it's way calmer, it's nice, so. So at the Indian restaurant, I literally walk in <laughs> like this and I'm like, hi. He's like, yes. Um, do you sell mango lussies? And he's like, yes. I'm like, can I have one? He's like, yes. To go? He's like, yes. <laughs> Dude, this guy was like, he was like Indian, but he was speaking Spanish. I was like, okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, mango lussies good for you because it's made out of mango. I don't know, probably coriander. I taste coriander in here. I think it's coriander. It's coriander, mango, coriander, and yogurt. So for all my stomach issues, uh, I think this should stabil stabilize my stomach bacteria. So I can continue eating tacos de buche. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all want an update about Mario. Honestly, he's a nice, fun guy. Mario, you're a fun guy, dude. However, you need to... Uh, no, you, you don't need to do anything. Um, it's more than just like a fun hangout, hang fun, just whatever. Because I know that in Mexico, I can... Okay, I know that I'm not here forever. And so like, it's very selfish of me to think of long term. And I think it's unfair for people. It's unfair for people to like fall in love or anything for someone that's just your temper. How I've started to catch feelings with Mario. And I hate that. I hate that because you want more, you want everything. He makes you feel like he wants everything from you, but words are cheap. Just like my friend Myra says, words are cheap. No, she doesn't say that. Talk is cheap. So it's all good. No hard feelings. We had fun. Um, wish I could see him again. Can't have everything, Caesar. We can't have everything. It's all good. If it comes back around, it'll come back around. So we will see what happens. Dude, this group of white people and Asians just passed by. Where am I? Um, okay, so I'm here at Antaramo. Okay, there's some really good quesadillas. There's a Hooters. And I'm crossing the street. Crossing the street. So yeah, that's what's going on. I hope I see uh, Mario again. He just, I just feel like he partied too hard. And we will see tomorrow. Mm. Pretty good. Okay. Officially, officially finished my mango lassi. Holy shit, the smog. Mm. So good. There is coriander in here because I have coriander in my teeth. How do you think it's coriander? It's strong. So I'm here at Antara Mall. And the purpose of my visit here is to buy some bath and body works and Nike. So we will see tonight. So in preparation that my parents are coming into town to come and visit me, I went to go get Bath and Body Works uh, flowers, wallflowers, 
and um, I also was passing by a flower market, so I picked up these beautiful, gorgeous flowers that only cost twenty dollars. <laughs> oh man, these would cost like what over a hundred dollars in in the U.S. It's pretty insane. Um, a quick lesson, real quick, guys. Um, there's this language in Mexico City called Nahuatl. Um, Nahuatl is spoken by about 1.7 million people in Mexico, uh, most of whom mainly live in central Mexico, and the smaller live in Nahuatl-speaking communities in the U.S. Nahuatl has been spoken in central Mexico since at least the 7th century. It was a language of the Aztec Mexica who dominated what is now known as Central Mexico during the late post-classic period of the Mesoamerican history. So there you go. And guys, the reason why I'm mentioning any of this is because a lot of words in the Mexican culture are derived from uh, Nahuatl. So for example, chilaquiles comes from the word Chilat, which means chila water, and the second component is kilit, which means edible plant, and that's chilat kilit. So that's chilaquiles. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> now you do. Um. Anyways, if you know me, the way to my heart is a plate of chilaquiles with sunny side eggs on top. It is so yummy, guys. If you go to Mexico City, please get yourself chilaquiles for breakfast or for brunch. Menudo. Menudo is a Mexican cuisine dish. And my understanding is that back in the day, when the poor community didn't have anything to eat, they would get the scrap parts from a slaughtered cow, which would be stomach, intestine parts, tripe of a cow and they made it into this yummy soup which is called menudo i highly recommend that you try this at least one time and it's yummy and it's good for hangovers so okay so as i continue my walk through the market they told me that they told me that this market's only available on sundays so this art market will be only on Sundays and you can literally buy paint you can buy um, dude I can't speak English the stuff for you where you paint on <laughs> dude I can't I can't think right now you can even like buy these right here they call it Marcos in Spanish Okay, I got the word now. It's canvases. Canvases. That's what that's called. So it's pretty cool outside. It's currently about 66 degrees and it's pretty chill out here. Everyone's pretty nice. You see all kinds of people just walking around and you can see all the arts that they're selling. So. This is in Colonia San Rafael, and then you can like order your stuff, like if you want art made at your choice, you can just like order it with them. Most of the people that come out here and show their art are not even from Mexico City. They're from the outskirts. This guy said that he's from like, he's closer to Puebla in a very small town. And they said, well, how do you like, if I order something from you, like a, like a personalized art, how do you, how do you deliver that to your client? He's like, I'll just take, I'll just take transportation and then um, hand deliver it to my client. And I'm like, okay, so like in the metro, he's like, yes. So this guy would literally take a bus, go to the metro, and then he would meet you somewhere to deliver your art. So he's charging about 200 and 
50 pesos. Dude, I don't remember what he said. I don't remember, but he charged a lot of money. But the art was incredible. So, tying my shoe right now. And I feel pretty safe. I feel pretty safe where I'm at. Uh, however, it's important to stay village vigilant about your surroundings, being aware of your surroundings. Um, because you just never know what could happen, right? So you don't want to be vulnerable and make it seem like you can be a target for any kind of whatever. So yeah, I'm walking back to my apartment in San Rafael, which is probably like 10 minutes that way. And we'll have to see what I will do next. Have a great day, bye. Oh my God. This little French bulldog. <laughs> Why? Why? One of my favorite places to go to in Polanco is this three-story Starbucks. Um, this used to be some kind of bank. And it's such a beautiful building. In the entrance, there is a vault. And then you can order here. This is the menu. And of course, you know, the pumpkin spice latte is here in Mexico City, so don't have to miss that too much. And I would come here a lot. It's just so pretty. They also sold pan de muerto. Pan de muerto is translated to bread of the dead, also called pan de los muertos in Mexico. It's a type of pan dulce, sweet bread, traditionally baked in Mexico during the weeks leading up to the Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead, which is celebrated from November 1st to November 2nd. It is a sweetened soft bread shaped like a bun, often decorated with bone-shaped pieces. Pan de Muertos is eaten on Dia de los Muertos at the gravesite of alternatively a tribute called an ofrenda. In some regions, it's eaten for months before the official celebration of Dia de los Muertos. Um, coming from North Mexico, uh, this is something that we didn't really do up there, so this is pretty cool. And it's actually yummy. You should try that. And one thing about Mexico City is the noise pollution. Um, this is something that you'll experience if you are outside the tourist area. There's just all kinds of commercials. They're trying to buy <laughs> metals, old these metals. Uh, the truck passes by every day, every day. Especially it passes by when you're taking a nap. Here, they're selling tamales from Oaxaca. So. <laughs> and there's more, hold on. <laughs> and then, as you're having a Zoom call, here comes the band. <laughs> they just pass by playing music and you can uh, pay them to play your request of a song. So, as I continue my dating journey in Mexico City, um, this really sweet guy, his name is Jonathan, invited me to a cool restaurant called Maria 138. Maria 138 is a laid-back, charming restaurant featuring traditional Sicilian cuisine and a very cute courtyard and cats. Lots and lots of cute kitties. <laughs> Very interesting, huh? Wow, follower, thank you so much for sticking with me till the very end of this video. I hope that you give me a like and that you subscribe. 
Um, and I cannot wait for the next episode. So I'm sending you peace and love. See you around.